Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Despite Yelan being labeled as a 5-star Sing Cho, she is actually a unique character, the first of her kind even. This is mainly because of her novel kit scaling mechanics wherein she's a DPS that scales purely on HP. In this video, I want to talk about what that means for Yelan and its implications for Genshin Impact's potential future characters and meta. Okay, you might be thinking, wait, Yelan's not special. There's Noelle and Ito who scale from defense, or Hutao who scales from HP. But it's not the same thing with Yelan. If you think about it, what they do is convert defense and HP into attack, and their base damage multiplier is still based on their attack stat. This is also why they can still technically benefit from attack buffing effects despite wanting other stats. The closest to Yelan might be Albedo, whose skill and C2 scales from defense, but the rest of his entire kit remains attack scaling. Ayato and Yai helped open the door slightly for additional scaling in DPS characters. In their case, they make HP and EM stats less copium without making it feel like frustrating split scaling since they still technically fully depend on attack. If you get HP on Ayato, then okay, it's something, but at the end of the day, they are attack scaling characters too. But Yelan is built different. She completely commits to direct HP scaling as her base damage is literally multiplied from her HP. There is no conversion happening. No one else has this unique scaling mechanic to such an extent. You might say, well, Kakomi has something like that, Zhongli has something like that, but at the end of the day, it's only like that. Take note, Kakomi's HP scaling damage is only base damage added to her attack scaling damage. That's why even if you get attack on her, it still has some use. Zhongli has a similar mechanic where his burst skill and normal attacks take some damage from his HP, but even that doesn't have the same damage value as still getting attack stats. This seemingly innocuous change in Yelan's kit opens the door for implications on what's to come in Genshin's future character builds, choices, and possibilities. For one, Yelan flips around DPS weapon choices. Because of Yelan's full HP scaling, base attack is rendered irrelevant on weapons. If you've seen guides, whether mine or others, low-tiered weapons that you wouldn't even think of putting on a max-level DPS character in the endgame are now almost as good as 5-star weapons. Zhongli had something similar with a black tassel, but that was for his shield. Hu Tao did as well, but that could easily be replaced and overtaken by a 4-star weapon. We've seen traces of 3-star weapons becoming best in slots already in the past. Albedo had his Harbinger of Dawn meta, and while you can say that a 4-star Cinnabar Spindle is now his best, newer players will not get this anymore. Then there's Kokomi as an anti-crit weapon user, and being a great Thrilling Tales unit using that HP stat. Now Yelan is the new incarnation of that trend. Aside from the Favonia War Bow, the Three Stars Recurve Bow, or Slingshot, that were just weapon fodder before, is now a competitive bang for your buck choice on Yelan. That's actually amazing. These are very, very low cost to level up as well. A three star weapon costs around 40% of what a five star weapon will require to raise, but the difference of a five star weapon like Skyward Harp or an R5 four star like Stringless on Yelan versus a three star like Slingshot or an R1 Favonius, which has more utility even, is very narrow or even barely perceptible with basic stat optimization. Obviously, the gap is larger if you compare it to her Aqua Simulacra signature weapon as it's tailor-made for her. But the fact that her entire weapon tier list is very unusual if you think about it makes me wonder if there will be newer characters in the same situation. So could someone finally make good use of the long ridiculed The Bell? The next major thing is that Yelan further changes what we look for in artifact farming and will help in letting us have more options for artifacts that we would have considered copium before, and that's always a good thing. Now, attack is effectively a dead stat on Yelan, you really just want HP all the way. She's yet another character that benefits from the Shim Emblem domain, the most efficient artifact domain currently, but is not fighting for the attack stats that your other emblem characters, like Saint Beidou, Raiden, etc. want. 
With characters like Yelan, artifact farming will have a wider coverage of what's valuable for your characters to keep, thus helping with resin efficiency. Plus the fact that on Yelan, HP doesn't diminish and damage returns as quickly as attack does on typical characters, farming and building Yelan is much more forgiving for min-maxers. With those points, I think Yelan represents an even greater shift to have more free-to-play or new player-friendly options, cost-effective weapons, cost-effective artifact farming. If this trend continues, then that's really good news. Yes, Yelan isn't the first to shake things up, but she does push things further, and I hope to see more 4 stars changing the stat meta as well. Now that we're getting additions to the Hydro roster, it becomes more appealing to consider double Hydro teams instead of being limited to your Abyss teams fighting for even just one Hydro unit. Although players have been concerned about Yelan just being a more expensive glorified Sing Cho, there's also merit in putting them together or utilizing them in separate teams instead of pitting them against each other. They do have comparable attributes, but there's also the fact that Singcho is such a good unit that having someone double his function and damage is an advantageous option to have. You could even say the same thing about Fischl and Yai with their similar yet extremely useful functions. At this point, there's way more incentive for Hydro teams to evolve, which means maybe, hopefully, we're finally heading for Hydro Resonance buff changes? Maybe a resonance that has an HP-related buff instead of just healing effects? Fingers crossed. Ultimately, I think a character like Yelan was inevitable. In fact, maybe she should have arrived earlier. When Hoyoverse started introducing partial scaling characters, it was only a matter of time until we got to the extreme of that spectrum. We could say that Albedo came first with his defense scaling skill, but because that was the only part of his kit that scaled on defense, he was considered a split scaling character. Yelan, on the other hand, has all her important damage talents scale from HP. More than that, as a Hydro character, Yelan has better use and more team comps, while Albedo really only shines in double geo or full geo teams. I think these factors make Yelan a more significant precedent for more diversification of our unit choices. I don't want Yelan to be a one-time niche character, but a trendsetter for characters that lead to more variety in farming, in the meta, in what's valuable and what's not. Given Yelan's reception and value, we can be optimistic that there's a lot of room for new units like her. What's next? Will we see a non-animal character who will scale completely on EM? Could we finally have an entirely defense scaling Geo DPS? Will the bell finally rank high in weapon tier lists? I hope Hoyoverse has exciting surprises in the making. That's going to be all for this video everyone, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic down in the comments. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!